Okay, hi. So I don't know if you guys have seen it already or not, but I had done an interview with this author called Manu Pillai about his book Rebel Sultans, and that came about because I had talked about his book Ivory Throne. Now through those two conversations, I actually was put in touch with Jagannath Publishers, who published Rebel Sultans, and they sent me a bunch of books to read and review. So again, the books were sent to me for free, but these are not paid reviews in any way. The first one that I read was called uh, Jahangir, and it was by a author called Parvati Sharma. Now, again, as I mentioned, uh, for Ivory Throne and Rebel Sultans, like I'm not someone with a history background, but I really enjoyed reading all three of these books because there's so much of a human aspect to how these stories were written and how the characters and the people involved were portrayed as human, and that's something that I really liked about Jahangir as well. And the fact that it sort of is really fun and easy to read, and you want to know what's happening next. And Parvati Sharma has this great ability to evoke so much emotion for people and characters that we have only ever read about in the context of a classroom, where we're like, okay, man, this one went to war, that one won this war, this one had the sun. Like that's our exposure to these people and these characters. But the way she writes about them and their heartbreak and their struggles with their parents and their kids and all of that, it just really humanizes them and I really enjoyed reading the book. So I also had a chance to chat with her um, over a Skype interview. So I'm going to get right to that because I also talk about some of the other things I liked about the book while I'm talking to her. So check that out. It's coming up now. So hi, Parvati. Thank you for joining hi. me today. Hi, Rishi. Thank you for having me. It's so good to finally see you and chat with you properly. Yeah, it's good to see you too. So uh, we will be talking about your latest book today, Jahangir. Congratulations on that. Thank you. So this is your fourth book, right? After your children's book and two fiction books? <coughs> Correct. So how did you uh, choose Jahangir? Uh, so I would say actually that uh, it's less that I chose Jahangir and Jahangir seems to have chosen me. Nice. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was really, mm, I mean, it was less like a planned out thing and more just a sort of fortuitous uh bit of good luck i would say you know i mean i was uh, i written this children's book on barber and uh, but i hadn't really thought of writing history as such for adults <clears throat> and i was actually working on a novel uh, also for juggernaut juggernaut uh, are the publishers of jahangir also and i'd gone to have a have a you know meeting about the novel with uh, my editor sivar priya and uh, chiki sarkar um, and uh, and we were we talked about the novel and at the end of the meeting, Chiki said, uh, you know, she said, you, you take your time with the novel, like don't rush it, like you don't think as much as you think, and, like uh, so all good advice. And then she was like, you want to, you know, uh, take a break from it maybe and and uh, try your hand at uh, writing a history for adults. And, and she said, uh, you know, she said either Barber or, or Jahangir, whichever one you want to. And since I'd sort of done Babar in a way, and I knew that Jahangir also is also the only of the so Babar wrote his own, you know, Babar Nama, he wrote his own memoirs. And Jahangir is the only other one <clears throat> amongst the Mughals and possibly one of the very few, you know, emperors in the world who wrote also his own diary. And it's always like it's the rare thing that you get to see somebody in their own words. And I knew that, you know, Babar was uh, it was great to read the Babar Nama and I'd heard good things about Jahangir Nama. So uh, so I came back home and I looked it up and I started reading and like within a few pages I was hooked, you know, because it, it really is. I mean, I would recommend it to anybody to read. It's just, it's easy to read and it's really um, quite a fascinating, unselfconscious glimpse into this guy's life. Uh, and so I knew that, you know, this was a story that I would really like to tell. So I think in, within half a day or something, I said yes and uh, did not look back there. Nice. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't because I enjoyed reading it. Well, I'm glad I didn't because I really enjoyed writing it. So I'm very happy to hear that, that you like reading it. Thank you. Awesome. So in terms of writing um, non-fiction in history after writing um, fiction, how was that different? I'm sure there was a different amount of research that went into it and things like that. Yeah, certainly. I mean, definitely research like went into it. Um, uh, you know, I guess I guess maybe a couple of things that 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 um, that are different. Uh, one is, you know, for me, like as a writer of fiction, one of the one of my uh, weaknesses and biggest challenges is is plotting. You know, like getting a, a story, uh, getting this. Like I I I I can you know I I enjoy building characters and and situations and atmosphere and dialogue, 
but getting them to like do stuff with each other in a compelling way towards a compelling story that is like my biggest challenge and in this case like jangi's story uh is just like you know even if you just look at it i, I mean i didn't have to do anything it just begin at the beginning and end at the end and there's something happening all the time like right from the beginning there's this huge thing about you know akbar goes to salim chisti and prays for him and it's like a boon and then you know it's almost like a miracle that he's born and then like at the end of his life there's this major rebellion and there's this he get kidnapped you know i don't know mogul emperor being kidnapped uh so so there's just action and adventure all the time and then there's you know there's, there's romance there's murder there's uh, there's there's drinking there's painting there's traveling so this stuff just happens so i didn't have to uh think about that at all <clears throat> and so that was very very nice and big advantage for me and i think the other thing that was different and i think you know i'm i'm going to go back to that novel that that i had taken a break from earlier and i'm going to try and apply this to that was that uh, i realized that in non fiction uh you know certainly in this case uh the more you read the more you research the more perspective you gain on you know your subject so um so so i had a first draft um you know the plot the story was the same obviously but but there was the jangi that the character was of a certain kind like a you know the how he's usually perceived so weak fond of drinking not really kind of lightweight uh not really worth anyone's time that much and then like before i began my second draft i i had shown this to a few people including a friend of mine who is a historian uh, anuruti morya and and she gave me like more things to i mean we had we had conversations and she told me like her own uh, perspectives on him and she introduced me to other kinds of research more more modern research on him and uh, suddenly i began to see that you can see the same person through more or less the same fact in a very different way and uh, so you know wait the the second draft uh changed changed when in, in the second draft my perception of jahangir changed quite radically and uh, that's something that doesn't necessarily happen in fiction so you know uh, because in fiction there's a tendency to get sort of wedded to your characters and to get you know to feel that so even though you've sort of invented them suddenly feel that you know this this there can be a tendency for the characters to solidify or become you know rigid in your own head and you 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 are afraid of rethinking them you know there's sometimes characters and situations do need rethinking So, uh, so that was that was good experience for me. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I actually noticed that about all of the the not characters, but all of the people that you've mentioned in the book. They're yeah. all very human. You know, you bring in so much humanization to them. Like you talk about, yeah. you know, the father's expectations of the sons, and you know, yeah. you know, the whole, you know, like every South Asian parent would know, <laughs> do this or that or the other. And you know, there's just so many idiosyncrasies about these. little things jahangir would do with you know measuring things and drawing things and things like yeah. that so is that what you're talking about where you sort of discover this whole other or you chose to focus on these other areas outside of the usual he went to war he won the war he yeah. went to another war he won the war yeah no no so that was that for me because jahangir never went to any wars he yeah was, he was chilling <laughs> like his father tried to send him a couple of times like one time he just didn't show up in court like the day that you know he was supposed to go it was auspiciously like the astrologically determined time and akbar was all set to send him to the deck and to start conquering it and jahangir was just like he just didn't show up or you know or another time he sends him to uh, you know into into to mewar And then he just sort of sets up camp in in Ajmer. He sends the rest of his 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 generals like go and do whatever he wanted to. Do. I'm I'm gonna chill here. So he was <laughs> set up his hookah and he's just chilling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and then you know later even when he's emperor, you know he 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 wants his Shah Jahan does some amount of conquering for him, but he wasn't really interested in. So so that uh, that that whole thing was not even a part of his radio story. uh so his own story tends to focus on uh well you know his own interests are sort of nature and art and uh, uh those sort of things which he writes about a lot in the jangir nam uh and but as to as to the uh the 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 the, the, the sort of human emotions i mean that you know i those are things that those are things that i felt when i was sort of writing and researching the book you know so so uh, it might be a little fanciful to 
to think of uh, you know Akbar as South Asian parent or Jahangir and Akbar having this sort of you know father son dysfunctional relationship. But on the other hand, they were they were uh, human beings, you know, and yeah. uh, fathers and sons, the parents and children always have complicated relationships. And and if you can imagine, like somebody you know very successful parents, I mean anyway parents. Get into their children's heads. There's no way that you know you don't you don't spend you know, a lot of time in good ways and bad and you know all sorts of. Uh, so, but if you have a parent like Akbar, my God, you know, and and uh, no matter what Jahangir might have been, he could never be Akbar the Great. Yeah. And you know, he presumably would have realized this at a fairly young age. That and and the fact that all three of Akbar's sons, you know, become sort of alcoholics. Even given the sort of tendency to drink in the in the Mughal family and amongst the nobility in all the sort of ages, still there's something I felt that perhaps that had something to do with it. You know, just the relationship also. Um, but but in the sense of what changed for me, if you're asking that, you know, what, what changed in terms of my own thinking about him, that was a little bit different. That was, what, I think what changed for me was in, in my first draft, I had this idea that he kind of really survived almost by luck, you know, and that he wasn't, you know, he wasn't really, he was not like, uh, you know, that uh, sort of, this is uh, Henry Beveridge, who's the editor of the first translation of the Yangi Nama, he puts it really well in his introduction. He says that, and I've used this in, in the book also, that, uh, you know, he would have been a better and happier man as the head of a natural history museum. Yeah, you know, I enjoy <laughs> that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's nice, and and it and it does create a certain impression of him, right? But on the other hand, if you look at him in a certain way, which you know, some modern historians have started looking, uh, you also see that he, you know, he was after all, he was emperor for twenty-two years. Most of that time was fairly peaceful, fairly prosperous. There weren't like that many, you know, there was a rebellion in the beginning, rebellion in the end. In between hardly anything, uh, so he he couldn't have been so bad as an admiral. Yeah, he couldn't have been uh, drunk or just you know bird watching his entire life. He must have had some ability of to administer the empire, even if through delegation. You know, even if the idea of of, of him being you know you can look at the relationship with Nur Jahan two ways. One that she sort of controlled him. Uh, and he had no power, and she just took over, and she was like this henpecked, weak uh, drunkard, or like he just sort of delegated some of the responsibilities to her, which is, I mean, there's no a smart move on his yeah. part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So I actually really enjoy reading it because I'm not from a history background. I'm from an engineering background. So my last exposure to history was in school where you have to, you know, memorize the dates and memorize who was married to who and who was whose father. So I enjoyed reading about all the the drama, you know, like all of the relationships and the gossip and the way, you know, one person would tell another person something and it would be yeah. totally twisted by the time it reaches the third yeah. person. Yeah. And I also like that it read in um, in sort of short episodes almost. So yeah. you did leave the reader to the chance to sort of piece together what happened in between. So how did you choose that style of narrative? And you also left a lot of open-ended questions and you left them unanswered, which I liked. Yeah. Well, uh, well, the open-ended questions that are left unanswered because I don't have the answers. So it was just, you know, well, how could But you I? didn't add any speculation either. You left it to the reader, which I liked. I mean, yeah. Well, so that, in fact, you know, I didn't want, because, I mean, I'm also not a historian. I, I you know, I, I studied history I'm sort of in my MA, I did the history, but that's been a long, long time since that, uh, that part uh, of my life. Uh, so, so I didn't want to start, you know, uh, speculating too much or, you know, uh, being too, uh, because, because frankly, I, I wasn't sure if I, you know, if I, if I had, I, I don't have that expertise and, you know, so, uh, but what I did enjoy, I mean, I enjoyed the reading, the researching, going back to history. It was like a huge amount of fun. I mean, I really, like, you know, it was, um, like, I really, you know, I would wake up in the morning and I would be excited about Jahangir. And, That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and I'd meet people and I'd be like, oh, you know, and every story, like, that I read about him, it was I wanted to tell somebody or if I wanted to, like, people were sick of hearing me talk about Jahangir by the end of this project. 
so I really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed seeing how people's uh, how people have written about him and the arguments that are happening about him. You know, this perspective, that perspective, or you know, the story. He he himself writes about a certain event and how somebody else writes about it, or you know how you know Akbar Nama, Abul Fazl will talk about Jahangir and how. Uh, maybe future, a future historian, Mughal historian will talk about him. So, and I, because, and, it, and to me it was fun to see how people, you know, can have so many different perspectives and you can tell that they have those perspectives also because of their own prejudices and their own yeah. philosophies. And uh, so I wanted to just put that on the page because I thought it was interesting and I thought, you know, uh, I thought people would find it interesting to... Uh, to, yeah, to, to, to know that there's, you know, there's so many different interpretations available. I think I was also definitely hooked. It was like almost like watching a reality TV show where you're like, no, what's going to happen next? Who's going to rat out who? Who's going to maintain loyalties? You know, it's, it was very, it was almost like, you know, definitely like watching, like, yeah. I don't want to say roadies or spits filler, but you know what I mean, you know, yeah. who's going to... Who are the allies? Who are the enemies? So yeah. it, was, it was good fun. The other thing I really appreciated that you mentioned, which I think does not get enough mention or maybe isn't understood enough is that you you mention uh, mental illness in a couple of places you mentioned you know he must have had anxiety or this person must have had social anxiety so how were those speculations that you sort of saw in his behavior or did that come up through conversation with people how did you decide to include that so so the so the so the most uh, prominent case of a of a mental uh, disturbance is with his first wife right with man wife and uh, she commits suicide yeah and, uh, and she can't uh, because you know there's this big rivalry between uh, jahangir and his son khusro and akbar jahangir's father and khusro's grandfather sort of getting in the middle of it and Khusro is aligning with Akbar and telling tales on his own father and his father is like really upset with his son and uh, you know Jahangir is upset with his son and uh, and I assume possibly taking it out on you know Khusro's mother that is man by and uh, so he says so himself that you know that she was prone to uh, you know that in the translation it's, it's translated as, as going berserk okay mm. And uh, so, 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 so other, uh, you know, other historians have uh, speculated uh, that it might, you know, possibly have been a case of uh, manic depression. Yeah. And, you know, from the symptom, it, it, you can, you can sort of make that conjecture. Yeah. Um, so, so that definitely, I thought, uh, I mean, there was that, you know, that, that speculation exists and, yeah. and it made, and it made sense. Um, in other cases, have I have I spoken about anybody else? And, uh, sort of. I think you uh, mentioned that Jahangir also got pretty anxious by the end, no? Yeah, but that I just imagined that he must have been. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know. No, but it, I think the fact that you mentioned it makes for very touching storytelling, mm -hmm. because you know I think when you are forced to read the facts and figures when you're growing up and reading history you don't see the struggles that they might have gone through and then to sort of read that. And there were some really touching moments that you've yeah. mentioned, you know, when uh, when sons die, when mothers die, when wives die. It's, yeah. it's really it's so beautifully written. It's just very, you know, I had to like pause and take a breath and close the book and be like, I'm going to mourn the loss of this person for two seconds before I continue. So it was very well written. So thank you thank for that. You. No, you definitely made history easy thank to read and fun to read and thank brought you. in all the masala of modern day television. <laughs> Thank you. So, what's next for you after this? Mm. Back to that novel. Back to that novel. Yeah, back to that Waiting. novel. I, mean, I hope. I hope that it uh, happens sooner rather than later. And nice. uh, um, and yeah. So so far, just that. If if you know, if more history writing happens, I would love to do it. I've I, I've enjoyed this process so much that um, I I'd, I'd love to do more of, of of this kind of you know historical writing also. Yeah. Awesome. So now just to wrap up, I have a bunch of, uh, as, yeah. as Karan Johar would call it, rapid fire questions. Yeah. <laughs> so just some fun questions, which yeah. I, I feel like will separate this video from the other interviews that you must have done. So if, if Jahangir had an Instagram handle, what yeah. would it be called? What would it be called? Oh, okay. Then what, what would you think would be on his feed? 
No, I think I can tell you what it would be called also. I think it might be called uh, Stranger Things. Nice. Yeah. Because he's you, always finding uh, odd birds yeah, and it's trees. Like, all the time. And he's all the, and he, and he, it's like one of the recurring phrases of Jahangir Nama that, you know, he sees something, he says, I've recorded this because it is strange. And so the people who are saying, oh, this Instagram generation are wrong because Jahangir was doing this way I before was, anybody else. Was he, doing it? he was either, he saw something, he was like, I recorded it because it was strange. Or the second like recurring phrase in the Jahangir Lama is, I summoned the painters. <laughs> yes. Like, you know, taking the picture. I mean, you could. <laughs> yeah, because he can. <laughs> because he can. He just has yeah. to for them at all times. And whenever he saw something he wanted to paint, he was like, come on, boys. And, uh, and they would paint it for him. So to everyone who's hating on millennials, let it be yeah. known, okay? We just have access, but everybody has the interest. Yeah. Okay, next question. Who would yeah. you say is the modern day Noor Jahan? Modern day Noor Jahan? Like an influential woman that's sitting behind the scenes, whispering uh, directives. Uh, uh, gosh. No, she wasn't, so, so the thing is, she wasn't really sitting behind the scenes. Mm. Yeah. She was kind of, she was kind of, like, okay, what about, I don't know, Michelle Obama? Michelle Ooh, yeah, Obama. I like that. She was, they, I mean, so because yeah. the way I imagine it, you know, there is this imagination that she was sitting behind the scenes, she was controlling everything, she was this, like, you know, villainous, like, super vamp, you know? Yeah. But, but the way that, and I mean, not just, I mean, there are, there are other arguments, and, and I like this particular way of looking at it. From yeah. Myself. Is that she was like his co, you know, his, I mean, the, the Ruby Lal in her, in her latest book, in Empress, has made this argument that she was actually a co sovereign, you know, that's why I mean, the yeah. title Empress. So yeah. she was an equal partner with him yeah. as a ruler. And um, Michelle Obama is also like she has what? a personality and a following unto herself, unto herself. not just as First Lady, exactly. but as a woman in, in a powerful position on her own. Yeah, exactly. I like that answer. Yeah. Next one. If BuzzFeed titled your book, what would it be called? <laughs> Don't say Stranger Things again. Sorry? You can't say Stranger Things again. No, no I can't say Stranger Things. Is it like, does it have to be like one of the listicle titles? Yeah, like a clickbaity thing. Like number 17 will shock you. Oh. Oh. I don't know. How... How Jahangir drank 20 goblets <laughs> of alcohol a day and lived to tell the tale. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And also, let's not forget the opium. There was also and let's not forget involved. Yeah. yeah. The nice. opium was to actually help him not drink. Like, it's when he stopped drinking that he started having the opium. Oh, and then, like, my favorite bit is like how he stopped drinking when I mean, he tries to reduce his drinking and he, he dilutes his. His his liquor with wine to make it. <laughs> what a guy! Yeah, I mean this is this is a man. To be nice. Honest. Okay, so last two. Um, what do you envy the most about the life that they must have had, like Jahangir and Nujan? For me personally, it is summon the painters. I yeah. would want to have a team yeah. of painters I could summon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. So that kind of power and that access, that wealth, that power. But whether I envy or not, I don't know. Because you know, while I was writing it, I used to, I used to like think, like, wow, imagine that kind of just like complete power. I mean, the kind of power that, like, you know, if he, when Jahangir closes his eyes at night, all the lights, like all the all the cameras are are, are switched off. And everybody just has to look out in the dark. So like he's, he sleeps and that's when night falls. Damn. But, <laughs> but I don't know. But I used to think that I don't know if I would want it because it's too much. Like I'd go mad. I mean, I think you'd also need some opium. I would certainly need a lot of opium. <laughs> yeah. Okay, last question. So 500 years from now, if you had to write a history book about somebody who's alive today, who would you want to write about? 500 years from now, I hope, I hope, I hope that we, the world, the globe will exist 500 years from now. <laughs> Hypothetically. <laughs> Hypothetically, 500 years from now. Ah. Uh, um, oh, God, this is, this is the problem. You know, this is, so this is even, even with fiction, 
One of the first things I realized when I was writing fiction is never write about things that you're too close to. Because yeah. you like feel closely about, if you feel deeply about something, what you write is going to be absolute rubbish. Because, you know, you have too much. Either you're like too upset or too happy or too sad or whatever. So now you ask me about like right now. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I would, maybe I would write... A history of not a person. How about a history of Delhi? If Delhi survived, yeah, that works. Yeah. yeah, how it survives, how we get rid of this great pollution that we are in living right now. Yeah. What happens really? I'd really like to know how, what it yeah. looks like 500 years from now. Personification of the life and times of Delhi. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's yeah. gone so much. I don't know. Like, I don't know what all it's going to go through. Yeah, and it already has gone through, poor Delhi. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think growing up in Bangalore, I realized that, you know, we were very chill, we were a little village, we were chilling. <laughs> Delhi was dealing with like death and plundering and death and plundering. <laughs> yeah. and Bangalore was like, we're making coffee, y'all want to come? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a, I spent a couple of years in Bangalore, it's one of my favorite cities, I enjoyed it so much. I'm it, glad, I'm glad. <laughs> Because like, we're all yeah. peace-loving people. Yeah, and, and that's, the, that's the life that appeals to me. Like, come sit, have some coffee. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Varavati. That's all I have for you right now. <laughs> all the best for what's next. Thank you very much. And, you. and if you're ever in Bangalore, we can get a coffee. <laughs> I would have Let me know. I would love to. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I'm just going to stop recording. That was Parvati Sharma. Her book Jahangir is available on Amazon and through the Jagannath website. I will put both those links in the description below. You should definitely check it out. It's a light read. It's not super, super heavy. It's informative. It's funny. It's witty. It's emotional. It's everything that you want in a good story. And it's history. So you can feel fancy reading it and you can feel knowledgeable about the world and all of that. And so yeah, the more well informed we are, the more we understand that history sometimes repeats itself and we have to learn from it. Maybe we'll make better decisions going forward and learn from, from our past and not do that again and then make the world a better place. Bye.